Hello, Zero K fans. This is Jody Three bringing you another exhibition match stream. This will be just a normal stream, or I guess a hype stream. I'm not sure what to call this compared to the analysis cast. This is not an analysis cast. This is just a standard cast in anticipation of the tournament on Saturday. One v one tournament, standard monthly Zero K tournament. So if you haven't yet, sign up for it. And by the time this video is on YouTube, you'll have about a day. Or if you're watching it right now, sign up now. Right, go, sign up, come back, and then watch this as I go over some of the players who are going to be playing in tomorrow's tournament, or Saturday's tournament, not tomorrow. Yeah, it's not tomorrow. It's going to be in about 18 hours, I think. So when that's up, then I'll be casting that, hopefully with Sactoth and, and or Floris, or if they're on, we'll see. If not, then I guess I'm on my own. Or if anyone else wants to, I mean, that's that's fine. If you know, if you know the game, if you are more in, have more insight in the game than I do, that's cool. That's good. That's helpful to have. Anyway, Sponge and Magman are going to be our first players tonight. Both of them are going to be in the tournament on Saturday. So far, they both signed up. They're not going to be playing each other at the start at this point, but they are both in the tournament. So let's see how they play. Start off with them. Beyond Avalanche, by the way. And let's double check on advertising this. So I don't know that Avalanche is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be used in the tournament at all. I don't believe it's any of the maps that are starting off any of the matches for the tournament. But it is a fairly common small map, so let's just get to it then. The Sponge in the northwest corner of the map going for Cloaky Bots, which on this map is not unusual. This is a fairly small and relatively hilly map. You actually see a lot of different factory types. I've seen Jump Bots, I've seen Spiders occasionally, Shield Bots, Cloaky Bots, Heavy Tanks. Heavy Tanks are perfectly valid. These ramps here are going to handle them just fine. As you can see, all green all the way down. There's not even any real slowdowns across these ramps. But really, in terms of pathfinding, Avalanche supports pretty well everything. Although admittedly, gunship and air is a bit hard to pull off, but I've seen it done at least in a team context, if I recall correctly. But yeah, it's a bit hard to do just because of the fact that your opponent can get to you fairly quickly. It is an 8x8 map. Actually, I'll just confirm that. But yeah, it is a fairly small map. So trying to get anything fancy like that is probably going to result in your own death. Or at least your humiliating defeat. We aren't quite so cruel in the Zero K community that we outright execute players who do not play well, but you will probably lose the game nonetheless. We are usually nice enough, most of us. Yes, it is an 8x8 map. So yeah, it's quite small. 8x8 is pretty much the smallest that competitive maps get. So that's fairly standard. Now anyway, the Sponge is switching over. It's basically going for very heavy raiding. They have the Conjurer going for the Reclaim, basically in view of building a lot of power plants. So they do have their standard 2 and 2, or 3 and 2 rather. And they are going for a lot of Glaives. While on the other hand, Magman going for the Welder. Surprisingly, I mean, you kind of see what they're building in the back because the Commander really should be up front. But Welders are definitely more of a frontline builder than pretty much any other builder in the game. Due to the fact that they have a lot of health and they have a laser. Not a particularly powerful laser, mind you. It's 10, sorry, it's 40 damage a second. It's not great. It takes 5 seconds to kill a Glaive. Speaking of which, here come the Glaives. So about 6 Glaives are coming in here. They should be able to get rid of the Defender and possibly get rid of the Metal Extractor. Magnus Commander, however, is distracting them and will not go down to them. He's going to take him out. Go... Be left at about a third of health, though. But after that, it's going to be just... Actually, no, a quarter health. Wow, that's... That was a pretty... That was a big blow. In fact, two or three more Glaives. That has pretty obvious. A couple more Glaives, Magman's Commander would have been gone. Sponge would have taken it. So the Sponge, at least in this game, is being very aggressive. Magman, on the other hand, forced to go on the back foot. Be fairly defensive. Though, as I mentioned before, Welder is a frontline builder. It's going to be going through. It's going to be building up Mexes. Although, admittedly... Okay, it's building mechs all over in the southwest side of the map. That is fairly big. While the Sponge gets counterattacked slightly, the Kodachi goes down. But anyway, Magman taking all his economy and basically doing so unimpeded. The Sponge taking the northeast side of the map and the center of the map as well. But is not going to be winning with that alone. 
So at this point, both players are still fairly even. The sponge, however, has taken a decent territory advantage. They, they have enough initiative here in the center. It's quite a lot, but it is going to be difficult. If for no other reason, I mean, the commander has actually not even healed up yet. Magman's commander is just beam laser. There's no auto repair or anything, which is typical for battle comms, but not so much for support comms. Recon comms is also fairly common, but the sponge has not upgraded their commander, and Magman at this point... Two of the metal extractors in the southwest side of the map have been taken. The Sponge is getting attacked once again by another Kodachi, but the Glaze will be able to finish it off, losing a couple of their number, but that'll be it. And the Defender takes out, well, finishes them off, actually takes out three. Ooh, that is a lot. That is twice as much as the Defender should, by all rights, take out. Defenders normally should just kill one and leave another at half health, but that was very nicely done there by the Defender. Honestly, Magman didn't really micro that. But yeah, that was unfortunate for the Sponge. They lost three glaives when they could have only lost one. And in comes the panther as well. So the sponge, their commander is going to be a bit at risk. The panther really wants to target the commander if it can. You can stun it out. That's going to be a lot of firepower because the rest of this here, that can be stunned out easily. Especially panther Kodachi makes, although it looks like, oops, I can look up here. Looks like panthers are all that this magman is building. The sponge continuing to push out nothing but glaives, which at this stage is not totally surprising. We are still in the raiding phase of the game. But on a map like this, a map this size, it is definitely possible to avoid staying in the raiding stage that long. However, Magman has been spotted, and we will see how well that laser works. And it's actually, like I said, fairly well. Five, well, I mean, yeah, five seconds to kill a glaive, sure, but at the same time, that welder takes a while to kill. The glaives do not have free reign to kill it. However, the sponge doesn't really care about that, and Magman already prepared in their main base. Magman at this point has pretty well prepared their entire main base of defending its raiders, which is why I'm figuring at this point the sponge is probably going to want to switch it off to Rocco's. Or maybe Warriors that just want to go for a frontal assault, but more likely Rocco's given the sheer amount of static defense on so far. It's not quite hammer territory, but it's definitely something where Warriors would have to have quite the numbers, like three or four Warriors to be able to get that, which would take about a minute from this point. Like 15 metal being pushed in, and Warriors cost 220 metal each. Yeah, that would be for four Warriors. That'd be a good minute. And a minute's a long time in 0k. The Magman is being forced pushed back, building the defender line, which, like I said, at this point is already fairly difficult to penetrate. The Sponge is going to try once again, but these glaives are going to go down and just donate that much metal to Magman, however much the Sponge decides to donate before going away. So the Sponge generously giving another three glaives worth of metal straight to the Magman Foundation. The donation is greatly appreciated, and Magman will make good use of it. Unfortunately for the Sponge, they are not making the best use of the metal they are getting. And in fact, they are at a slight disadvantage when Magman gets that reclaim, taking that into account. It's about even, and Magman's actually... Their deficit is in power, not metal. They're starting to get pretty low on energy. They have enough metal in storage, it won't be a big deal for a little while, but yeah, the energy is a problem, and they're going for banishers on top of that. At the same time, the Sponge going for a single Zeus. One Zeus to be used in order to try to get rid of all these defenses. Which at this point will actually not be too difficult. The defenses are building way too close to the Sponge's line. But at this point, we have gone kind of into World War I. Not totally, but we are starting to get into trench warfare. I am just very surprised that neither player has gone for riot or assault units. At this point, the Banisher is up, so okay, not quite no players. The Banisher going for this, which will actually give Magman not that much power. I mean, the Banisher does get rid of a couple glaives, but goes down itself, and that was... Oh my goodness, 760 metal. Oh, wow. Magman must be kicking themselves right now. I'm really surprised they went for the... I'm Okay, not totally surprised they went for the Banisher, because the Banisher is really not a bad unit. There's nothing wrong with the Banisher. It's just that you have to be careful with it. You have to push it, put it behind everything. I and mean, having a Banisher on its own, that's the surprising part. And the Sponge, they have their Zeus out. They are going to be also building up more... As is Magman, like, Magman has built up quite a lot in the southwest side. They're really trying to get rid of these glaives. And one of the glaives has gone down, the other glaive about to go down. Magman has the southwest side all to themselves, all, except for this one hill. But otherwise, pretty much all to themselves. Yeah, every metal extractor down here belongs to Magman. On the other hand, Magman doesn't really know what's going on up here. Like, Magman has... Well, okay, Magman has some knowledge. They do know about half of the map. They know a bit about what's been built. They kind of assume that the metal extractors have been built up there, but they don't know if the sponge is going for a gunship switch or an airplane switch. Probably not a gunship switch. Brawlers have been nerfed recently. 
But they might still be going for a gunship or an airplane switch. That could still happen. There's no easy way for Magman to read that out because the sponge has not sent any units in. But that's not because they haven't been building units, just they haven't been sending them in. They've been grouping them up. Actually sending the Zeus over to the southwest side, the sponge going for a periphery attack rather than trying to break down the main base walls. Though admittedly the main base walls are being slowly but surely worn down by defenders from the sponge. And of course I mean walls in a metaphorical sense. Zero K not having any actual literal walls. Dragon's teeth were phased out of the game years and years ago. And Magman about to lose their commander. That is... Is that death? That is death. Magman loses their commander. And with that, loses half of their energy income. I think Magman might be throwing in the towel at this point. The Zeus is coming down here. There is a welder trying to deal with it. But even the welder cannot be enough. We'll get rid of one of the metal extractors. But that won't do it. That's the only builder that Magman has, by the way. That is it. This... 5 build power, sorry, 7.5 build power. 0 build power, my mistake, that welder is dead. This factory is the only source of build power that Magman has, and Magman decides it's not worth a throws in the towel, and that was game. So, what we learned here, Magman didn't quite keep their units alive early, the early Kodachi, just the thing with heavy tanks. The thing with heavy tanks, do not let that first Kodachi die. In as much as is possible, endeavor to avoid that first Kodachi dying. Ever. But anyone who's played the game for a decent length of time would know that it's just Magman apparently forgot it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you, Magman, but yeah, apparently that was that slipped Magman's mind during the heat of the game, which is totally understandable. But yeah, the Kodachi, if it dies, that's like a hundred or so metal given to your opponent directly. And if they're going cloaky boss, that's a lot they can build from there. While the sponge fairly aggressive. Good play there. I do disagree with the fact that they were going heavily for raiders early on. They probably could have focused a bit more on the southwest side earlier on. The fact that they focused on it later on was still a good choice. That was the best option to go for. But I still think that if they had gone for Rockos or Warriors earlier on, they would have had a better chance of pushing through. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Magman was investing in very high metal units. I think Magman was thinking team game-wise, where they actually have the time and resources to build those units at the five-minute mark of the game. Whereas in 1v1, especially on Avalanche, that's not really possible. I think heavy tanks can work factory-wise, but you have to be really careful with how you set up the rating. So that was the first game of tonight. The next game is going to be with Icons and Orphelius. Orphelius is playing the tournament. Icons has not signed up for it. I don't know if Icons will sign up for it, but at the moment, Icons is not playing. So yeah, only one of the players in the next game is actually playing in the tournament. That is Orphelia, so we'll see how they play. And maybe Icons will be motivated to join up because of this cast. I don't know. Stay tuned for that.